Gina Sinceri, ABC News for Commander Polanski. Commander Polanski, before the mission, you said part of the fun for you was going to be watching your five new first-time flyers experience this flight. How's that gone so far? Uh, it's been pretty fantastic, and uh, certainly it is a great time to go ahead and watch people that haven't uh, had the chance to experience this, uh, see it for the first time, and uh, watch their smiling faces and watch them just have a have a ball up here, and they all are, so uh, they're just doing great. Tech Sergeant Steve German from Air Force News. Colonel Polanski, how has your Air Force career helped in your experience as a shuttle commander? Well, certainly uh, it was uh, through the Air Force that I became a fighter pilot and a test pilot, which enabled me to meet the requirements just to become an astronaut, so uh, I think uh, that's uh, a start, and also uh, just uh, the kind of things that we did in, in the test world are, are very applicable to what we uh, are doing here in space. Irene, thoughts with Reuters for um, Mike Lopez Alegria. This mission is taking place um, with a backed up and unusual amount of solar activity, and I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about um, what, how that's affected your operations and if you've had to uh, abandon your sleep berths in the service module so forth. short answer would be it hasn't affected us very much. We have on one night had to t uh, sleep in alternate locations, uh, but it wasn't really much of an impact. The shuttle guys were uh, destined or had to sleep in the mid-deck, which is where they sleep, slept anyway. And uh, it turns out that three of the four places we could sleep on station were our normal sleep station. So it wasn't really much of a big deal. Uh, Todd Halverson of Florida today for Beamer. Uh, Beamer, I'm wondering how you all feel about the possibility of being sent out to uh, coax the P-6 array in and uh, whether you're concerned at all about uh, potential shock hazards? I'm not concerned at all about the shock hazards. we got a great team on the ground working a, a plan that hopefully will work well uh, for us, and, and, but if nothing else, I know it will be safe for us. So I'm not concerned about the shock hazard at all. And, uh, of course, we're excited about the uh, possibility of helping out and uh, helping uh, make the house up here a little bit better by fixing that solar array if we can. And if we don't get to do it now, I'm sure either the stage guys will do it or the next crew will come up here and take care of it. Thank you. Uh, Tarek Malik for Space.com and Space News for Beamer for Asani. Uh, tomorrow's spacewalk, obviously very vital in the station's uh, power configuration. I'm just kind of curious about uh, what you're looking forward to there and how, uh, how confident you are that it will go as planned. By the looks of uh, EVA-2, hopefully it will go just the same and it will be just as good. And it will be, of course, my first spacewalk, so I'm just looking forward to going outside and, and checking out the planet from that view. It should be pretty nice. Uh, Bill Harwood, CBS News. Um, for Mike L.A. or Mark Polanski, it doesn't matter which, uh, looking at a possible extra EVA to fix the P-64B retraction issue, what are your all thoughts about adding a day versus losing late inspection, because obviously if you add a day, of, an extra dock day, you lose the late inspection. I'm trying to understand how you guys look at that um, as operators. Well, certainly uh, we rely a lot on uh, the uh, imagery team on the ground to go ahead and take a look and uh, tell us uh, that they think everything is uh, really well with the orbiter, which we've gotten so far. And, uh, you know, I think we talked about this before, Bill, that uh, there are a lot of trades and risk trades here and uh, we have a mission to accomplish, so um, I'm sure that when we get together, we'll go ahead and take a look at uh, risk versus reward and see what's the, the best thing to accomplish. Um, you know, in a perfect world, I'd like to have everything, but uh, uh, it's not quite that perfect, so we'll go ahead and try and find out what's the best thing that we could do for the overall mission success and safety. Mark Carreau from the Houston Chronicle for uh, Beamer or Mark, Mike L.A. Um, what could a spacewalking astronaut do to help fold up the array? What, what approach could you take that might help solve this little problem? Hey, Mark. Well, the folks on the ground are looking at that pretty hard. Uh, we have a great view of uh, what's going on with the array out there from the shuttle flight deck. And uh, my perspective looking at it from the inside last time was it doesn't need much coaxing. Uh, you probably heard us use the analogy of trying to fold a map. Um, as you know, it, at times when you're folding a map, it, it's um, helpful to poke it here and there, and I think our approach will be not very different from that, although we'll be poking gently. 
Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com for Sunny. How have you found moving into the ISS, and uh, has Thomas, Tomas provided you any advice as he moves out? Oh, my, my new home is beautiful. It's a little bit crowded right now with all of the stuff that we've brought over from uh, Space App and, the, and our, my shuttle compadres here. But um, it's really clean. It's uh, just a nice place to live. It's fun uh, to go back and forth and do work all over the module. And Tomas has provided an amazing amount of insight. Of course, he's been up here for about six months, and so he knows pretty much all the ins and outs about everything. So I've been tagging along with him day and night trying to figure out how to make things work. So he's been a big help, and it's going to be a great stay up here. I can't wait. Jean-Louis Santini with Agency France Press for Thomas Reiter. Did you fulfill all your scientific objectives during the, your, your uh, time in the ISS as well as your own objective? Definitely. I think just this morning we completed our scientific program. So this is all uh, done, completed, and uh, the scientists are desperately waiting for the data to uh, do the analysis. Um, we gathered a lot of experience on how the station is run, especially for the ground team, how to work together with the other ground control teams in Houston and in Moscow. And personally, of course, I think uh, it was a great experience. I could do one spacewalk. I enjoyed the views. I enjoyed uh, the weightlessness. Um, but after six months, I'm really ready now to come home and see my family again. Holly Hickman, Fox News Radio, also for Tomas Ryder. Uh, there's been some renewed debate down here about uh, setting up an outpost on the moon versus going straight to Mars. And I'm wondering your perspective on living long term uh, and, and doing experiments up there, your, your opinion on whether we should try one or the other first. You know, I don't think it's a question of if we do one or the other first. Uh, it's clear that the station serves as an international laboratory to do research, but it's also kind of stepping stone to further exploration of space. Um, if the moon is a, another stepping stone towards Mars, this is something that the engineers have to uh, determine. I think it is a kind of obvious and good idea in order to uh, get ready to uh, develop further life support systems, for example, to um, understand how it is really to, wor uh, to work and to live for more than half a year in space, maybe for one year, for one and a half or even more, and then take the journey to our neighbor planet. Discovery ISS, this is JSCPAO. Please stand by for a voice check from KSCPAO. Discovery ISS, this is Kennedy PAO. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. with the Associated Press, I had sort of a lighthearted question for Mike L.A. about his passion for movies and movie dialogue. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, I know you have a, a game with the flight controllers of Movie of the Week, and I was just wondering, how does your, uh, your passion for movies help you get by living on the ISS? And I was wondering if, uh, if you shared it with the Discovery crew uh, since they've been up there. We did have a quick conversation with the crew while they were still in quarantine and tried to decide on a movie of the week. They sent up a recommendation. It turns out we got it just after they launched, and we had already used that movie of the week. So in one uh, respect, our great minds think alike, and so do ours, apparently. <laughs> Discovery ISS, this is Houston ACR. Please stand by for a voice check from headquarters. Discovery ISS, this is NASA headquarters PAO. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. Hello, this is Mark Tugel, German radio. I have a question to Thomas Reiter. Mr. Reiter, Will you miss the ISS when you go back, and what are you looking most forward to in Germany? Good schnitzel or something like that? Well, it's certainly kind of bittersweet uh, feeling, so to say. Um, I've been living here now for a long time, and this has become a home. Uh, so it will be a little bit sad moment to leave my colleagues up here. But um, 
Having been here for half a year, of course, you're missing ground. I miss my family, and I'm really looking forward to seeing